For my whole life, I've experienced a little bit of social anxiety in situations where I'm with people and the conversation seems to not be natural or there's silence for an extended period of time. I start to feel like I'm the issue. I get in my head and I think, well, if I just wasn't here, maybe people would be having more fun and the conversation would be easier. In those moments, I usually take one of two routes. I'll either take it upon myself to become the entertainment, I'll try to make the conversation better by saying something funny or I'll do something funny, or I get really stressed and I just question my whole existence, neither of which are a good option. I'm guessing I'm not the only one who has experienced social anxiety before. Maybe you've even experienced this feeling today. My guess is that even if you haven't experienced true social anxiety, that you felt at least a little awkward in a conversation before. What if I told you that I have the secret to never feeling awkward ever again in a conversation? Before I tell you what the secret is, let me tell you an embarrassing story about a time when knowing that secret would have saved me in a conversation. Basically, the story goes like this. Me and my friend Emma, we were with some friends and we were riding our bikes down the street and Emma, she goes up on the sidewalk and then out of nowhere, she hits a fire hydrant and goes straight over the top of it. It sounds kind of funny now talking about it, but in the moment, it was so scary. She fell down, her bike was completely smashed. My friends and I, we run over to her. And then my friends, they start asking her, Emma, are you okay? Emma, where are you hurt? What's wrong? Can we help you at all? And Emma's responding to these questions and I just sat there and I didn't know what to do. What's even worse about this story is the next day, Emma, after she was doing okay and she was fine and everything, she told me, Jimmy, when you didn't ask me how I was, it made me feel like you didn't care about me at all. And it made me feel so embarrassed because I did care about Emma, but I didn't care about, you know, what it looked like in the moment for me to be kind to her. And so I didn't ask any questions. This is so embarrassing, I know. But let's rewind. Lean in, because here's the secret to how you and I can never feel awkward in a conversation ever again. Ask people questions. That's it, that's the secret. Ask people questions, be curious. Imagine if instead of that embarrassing story I just told a second ago, where I just stood there and my friend Emma was like, why does she not even care about me? I actually asked questions in the moment. I imagine the conversation would have been way more meaningful instantly and my friend would have known that I cared about her. Let's see how it would have played out. So me and my friend Emma, we're riding with some friends on our bikes and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, Emma goes on the sidewalk and she hits a fire hydrant so hard. She flips over the front and she gets hurt. And our friends and I, we rush over to her and we start asking her questions. I ask her, Emma, are you okay? Where are you hurt? And one of our other friends says, is there something I can do to help with your bike? Emma, is there something that we can do to help you in this moment to feel better? And the next day after Emma was okay, she told me, Jimmy, it meant so much to me that you asked me questions because I knew in that moment that you cared. Wasn't this a little bit better version of that story? Asking questions is something incredibly important to do to understand someone and have a complete understanding of who they are and where they come from. So let's practice right now. Turn to your coaches and ask them some questions about their life and see if you can learn something new about them.
guessing by asking those little questions of your coaches, you just learned something new about them. Being good at asking questions takes a lot of practice, but the good news is that the more you practice, the more you're going to get good at it. And you know what? The coolest part about learning how to ask good questions is for me, it's that not only are you going to feel less awkward in conversations, but you're actually going to become more like Jesus. That's right. Let me show you how. We've been in this series called It's On You, where we have been talking about what it looks like to be a Christ-centered difference maker and how you can share Jesus with those around you. Today, the tool we're talking about to help you share Jesus more effectively with others is ask questions. I get it. You might be thinking, how can I tell someone about Jesus if I'm just asking questions? Isn't the key word in that sentence, tell? Let me ask you, think of something that you believe to be true. Maybe it's that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are in game. Chick-fil-A is indeed God's favorite chicken place. LeBron is the greatest of all time. Did you believe any of those things to be true or not true because someone just told you, this is true, believe it? Or did you take some time to consider the evidence for yourself? Instead of just telling someone, you need Jesus, we get to be more creative, ask questions about their life. This shows that we genuinely care about them as a person. And when we ask questions, not only do we get to understand more about what the people in our life care about, what they enjoy, but we also get to have more meaningful conversations, like knowing what's hard about their life, what they struggle with, and what they believe in. And maybe if you take a moment to understand what they're struggling with or what's challenging for them, you will find ways to share how Jesus has changed your own life and help with things you are struggling with or things that are challenging for you. This isn't just some random tool we are giving you based off of social psychology. This was a tool that Jesus used himself to start conversations about faith with others and to get people to believe in him. In the Gospels, there are 307 accounts of Jesus asking questions to others. Jesus understood that questions unlock depth within relationships and created pathways to talk about faith. One of my favorite examples of Jesus doing this is found in the Bible in the book of Mark chapter 4. Jesus was with the disciples crossing a lake when a huge storm comes up. The disciples get really scared that they are going to drown. Despite the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, is with them. And so they woke him up and they said this, starting in verse 38. They said, teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the wave, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he told the disciples, don't be afraid. I am the Son of God, here to take away the sins of the world. Me and the Father are one. I am the Messiah. Wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. That seems too easy. I thought we were just learning about how Jesus didn't just tell them what to believe. Okay, that's right. That's not actually what happened. Jesus gave the disciples a chance to figure it out for themselves. Here's how it actually went. Let's rewind. Jesus was with the disciples. They were crossing a huge lake when a big storm comes up. The disciples, they get really scared that they were going to drown despite the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, is with them. So they woke him up and said this, starting in verse 38. They said, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped. There was a great calm. Then he asked the disciples, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? What Jesus really did is he asked the disciples questions. He said, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? He gives the disciples a chance to reflect on how they're feeling and to ultimately come to believe who Jesus was on their own by asking those simple questions. He didn't directly tell them what to believe. We can learn from Jesus's life that asking questions is not only the secret to not feeling awkward during those conversations, but is the best way to create conversations about faith with others and to help lead them to believe in God. As humans, we like to talk about ourselves. When we stop talking about ourselves and ask questions of others, this actually gives us a chance to intentionally listen to people and to ask follow-up questions about their lives. One of the biggest things that I admire about your generation is that you want to make a difference in the world. 
asking questions and listening well to others is one of the easiest ways you can make a difference one person at a time. So just imagine if all of us watching this message decided to ask questions to those that don't know Jesus across all of our CCV campuses in the Valley, there are about 2,500 junior hires. If all of us decided to just ask one person in our life good questions, to actually listen to their answers, to ask follow-up questions and listen again, that's 2,500 more people that don't know about Jesus whose lives could be changed. Or imagine if we all asked two people, that's 5,000 people's lives who could be changed. I don't know about you, but that's the type of change in the world that I want to be a part of. So how do we start? In group time tonight, you're gonna come up with some questions as a group that you think would be helpful to have in your back pocket to use when you're asking questions to others. I want you and your group to create a database of sorts of questions that you think would work to lead to conversations about Jesus with the people around you. One of the best things you can do as Christ-centered difference makers is to ask questions, to be really good listeners, and to understand what the people in your life are going through so that you can love them like Jesus would. So my final question for you is, are you ready to take up the challenge to change the world and bring more people to believe in God one question at a time?